Okay, so this video is going to show you guys how to uh, start to use flow design um, to do some wind studies uh, for your building. And um, actually, if I go back to flow sign, one thing I want you guys to note is I'm going to click on the import tab and just take note of the different file types that are compatible with um, the flow design program. Um, STL is you know, the file type that I showed you the exporter for. Uh, that I have here in my Revit, and then obviously I create on the earlier video that I create one of the earlier videos that I created shows you how to get that um, add-in object file. Um, you cannot do through Revit, but if some of you guys are still in SketchUp, um, you can um, you know export from SketchUp as an object file. And I believe you can also export from Rhino as an object file as well. Um, a DWG and DWF um, you both can actually export from Revit, and then obviously, um, if you in it AutoCAD, it says as a DWG. I've never tested to see how they look. Um, I know DWF is more of like a PDF, it's kind of like a PDF viewer for Autodesk, um, so I don't know how well that will look. Um, I mean, you guys can try them. Uh, for DWGs, I don't know like if it would look more wireframe if you have something in 3D to bring in it. Um, but you guys could always try those if you wanted to. And then FBX is kind of the big 3D one that's compatible with a lot of programs like Rhino and 3ds Max and um, Revit. So you can export this from you know from Revit as well. Um, and then the rest, um, you know, J PNGs and JPEGs and JIF files or image files. So those aren't really going to help you with 3D models. And then um, I don't know what that last one is. Um, but mainly from Revit, it's either going to be an FBX file or an STL file. And I'll close that out a second. So I'm going to go back to Revit. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to export both um, types of files just to show you the difference between the two and just how they come in and, and different advantages between the two. Um, so if you have the STL file, um, you know, first if you want to export an STL file, um, go to the add-ins tab, and obviously this is if you install this add-in. Go to the add-in file, um, click STL file, um, exporter for Revit. I mean. and then you see here you have um, format, binary, and ACSII. Um, both of them obviously are both STL type files. Um, a binary file is just a little bit more compressed, is a little bit comp more compressed, um, so it has a smaller file size. Um, so obviously you always always choose that one, especially if you're if you're using this to export to MakerBot, you know, and uh, the MakerBot software to print, you know, actually to print a 3D model. Um, include a linked model is if you have a another Revit model that's linked to this one. Um, so an instance of that would be if this file just contains your building, and then the linked model contains your site, and that kind of just helps with file size and um, within Revit to keep your file size running smoothly so you just have your building and then your site on two separate files. Um, export color. As you'll see with color, it's um, when you export through either this or FBX, they kind of come gray. And it can be hard to see sometimes. So if you turn the export color on and you're in, you know, like a shaded view or something with color, that will come through. And then export and shared current ordinance. Um, you can always leave that checked. Um, I don't think it makes much of a difference um, since they're both Autodesk products. That's kind of, um, it knows to be compatible. And then you can obviously select your units. Um, feet is kind of more broad based, whereas, you know, if you start to switch to feet fractional inches and decimal inches, you, you know, you'll get like a more precise size. Um, but you'll see within your, um, within the wind tunnel, the actual scale of the model is not going to make much difference whenever it comes out. And then the last thing is you can notice up here there's two tabs. The categories tabs um, give you, gives you every single category in Revit. And this is the reason why I like to use STL file is um, obviously the stuff inside the building um, when you're doing a wind and house and when you're on the MakerBot um, trying to print through MakerBot with the MakerBot. Um, Stuff inside doesn't really matter, especially stuff like furniture or ductwork or structure. 
uh, like columns and beans and stuff. Um, so you can start to hide those categories here, and they won't show up um, when you export this file. Um, so it will be a lot easier to you know, kind of manipulate, and you can start to hide in those categories like furniture if you scroll up. Um, you know, you can uncheck furniture so you won't see furniture, and it'll just start to help make your file sizes a little bit smaller and get rid of stuff you don't need. Um, again, wind and you know, for wind analysis, that doesn't make too much difference. Um, but going into MakerBot, um, that will save you some time. And then obviously, you would just hit save. Um, I already have one saved um, that I've already done. So I'm going to cancel out of those. And then if you wanted to export as an FP. X, you would just click on the rabbit symbol, go to export FBX. Again, I've already have one that I've done, and then you can save. Um, but you can notice here you don't get that categories option where you can turn off some certain categories. Um, so if you wanted to, you'd have to start hiding stuff manually or saving as a separate file and deleting stuff that you might necessarily want to see. And then um, you can save it, save it from there. Um, one thing that I will show um, right now that you can do is I know some of you, and I'll probably show a separate video of this as well, is um, some of you are asking or having your projects um, open-ins or a louvered system that's going to allow wind to go through and you want to kind of test, see how much wind and if it'll actually be effective. And to start to do that is what you can do is you can click on like you know, maybe say the roof so you can see inside and then you can hide it and then you can zoom in and you know so say this is a window that's obviously it's not going to be this one but say this is your window or louvered system that you want to test to see if um, wind will, how wind will affect and be effective inside so you can start to select panels and then hide them as well and now you have an open in there and with the roof gone, you can start to see inside. And I'll, I'll do an, a separate um, one to show what that would look like. And, um, and then obviously what that would look like in, you know, in flow design. And then we can, um, you know, you'd export the same way as well. So now I'm going to go to flow design. And then, uh, the first one I'm going to bring in is I'm going to bring in the STL file. So you just import, find the file you bring it in. Um, to rotate in here, um, obviously you can use, you, know, you can just click on the cube and do it, or if you just click anywhere, right click anywhere on the mat, um, on the model, hold down, it lets you rotate. Um, it's a little bit more free, so sometimes you kind of get lost with orientation, so the cube lets you kind of do a little bit more cleanly. Um, but you'll notice with the STL file, site does not, uh, topography does not come in. Even though there actually is a topography category and it was checked, and uh, that's something that you know, and everything's turned on, and that's something I don't know why that didn't come through. So that's something I can look in to see what the issue is. So you can see, you know, there's the building. I can see what the issue is, but you can see how everything is gray, and sometimes it can be hard to see nor. You know, maybe you just want color on your building so you, you, know, you can differentiate between your building and the surrounding ones. But obviously this is a unique site, so your building is probably going to be easy to, to see pretty clearly. And then um, before I get into the actual use of it, um, I'm just going to open the FBX file. Back to my full design. Um, and then these are the demonstration models. You can actually use uh, these come with flow design, so you could use those, you know, however you want. You know, if you want to open the architectural one, you can start to use that to kind of play around with to kind of get yourself acclimated to flow design, or you know, you could use this model um, instead of your own to kind of follow this tutorial, um, tutorial um, to kind of get a feel for it, and then bring in your own model after to. You know, to do it, so I'm going to open the FBX, and you can see with the FBX, uh, two things happen with it. One, it comes in sideways, but it also brings in the site. Um, I'm going to use this to spin, so you can see, you know, there's the model, 
and there's the site comes with it. Um, there's actually to fix it. There's two things you can do. Um, obviously, and I'm actually once I start talking about uh, doing the actual wind analysis, I'll talk about orientation. But you can actually use the orientation to flip the Z um, or the Y, probably. No. So if I switch this to 90, it fix you know it, it fixes that so it's flat, but you can start to see now you can see how it's kind of off of the it's off of the um, kind of like where you, how big you can stretch this. And I'll I'll get into that how you could always um, fix that. You have to basically adjust the size of the thing. Which I believe you can still do um, in here. But if I go back to the orientation and switch this back to zero, um, you can see that that is a certain size because it only needs to be as big as whatever that is, you know, your your site or whatever model you're bringing in. And obviously, when it's sideways, it's a lot less wider than it is tall. Um, the other thing you can do is instead of if you didn't want to orientate that. Um, the correct way you could you can see this last one set aside you can hit top and that kind of flips it for you um, quickly so you can start to see um, but again when we start to get into further analysis and then switch to you can see here we're actually in 2d um, the 2d analysis mode um, 3d is what's going to help you with uh, is where you're going to get the, the you know, flow lines in 3D and stuff like that. So this is 2D simulation, then 3D, um, it starts to get, it could start to get you to mess up. Um, if you're, you know, you kind of see, you know, if you click on top, the top view, obviously that's not the top. Um, so it's kind of your preference. I mean, this is another reason why I like using the STO um, file instead. Um, just because it comes in the right way and it seems to work a little bit better. I mean, obviously, the one advantage to this is a uh, site base comes in, but I don't believe it. I mean, and obviously, you can tell that it kind of just comes in as one layer um, and it doesn't really do much for you. I mean, obviously, if some of you have um, reconstituted ground planes that can make a difference. So that's why you would make like this better, um, this type of file better. But I think STL is probably a better choice. And then if there's ever any difficulties, um, we can we can look into um, you know trying to help you guys out and, and figure a way around it. If you something with your site or something's not coming in, we can look into it and, and see what's going on. Okay. So I'm going to end this video here, and the next video is going to pick up with how to actually start to use the program and analyze everything.